It wasn't me, I swear. Victor felt his heart sink in his chest. The thought of losing the sergeant crossed his mind, and he panicked. He pushed Jacob out of the way, kneeling next to the behemoth of a man, and started to cry. No, this can't be happening, he said. The Marine coughed, blood coating his lips. The sergeant grabbed Victor's head and pulled him close. Opening his eyes, she whispered, Stop being a pussy, son. Victor watched as the man's eyes went wide and his body stiffened. Moments later, the soldier relaxed. Nothing remained but his lifeless body. Victor sat back on his heels with a puzzled expression on his face. Of all the remaining words he could bestow upon him, that hadn't been what he was expecting. He reached out and closed his mentor's eyes, pulling his dog tags off and slipping them into his pocket. Cadence pulled Victor by the back of his shirt. The moment the would-be Marine broke contact with the man, he cried out in a shrill voice. Victor smacked the girl's hand away as he tried to retrieve some semblance of masculinity. What the hell, you princess of the damned? Cadence pointed at the still military man. A moment later, the sergeant started to twitch until he shot up and grabbed at the air next to him. His eyebrow raised, confused that his meal wasn't nearby. How did you know? Romero fan. Victor's jaw dropped as the shell of a man growled and worked his way to his feet. The sergeant's vacant eyes stared at him, then turned to one of the lunch ladies who was trying desperately not to scream. He took a ragged step closer to her, and she backed herself against one of the portable milk fridges. The sergeant's movements were jerky. His joints seemed to stay locked as he wobbled forward. The rigor mortis faded until the sergeant lunged at her and started chewing at her neck. Everybody in the room averted their eyes for a moment, left to the sounds of breaking bones and ripping flesh. Mrs. Gray grabbed Olivia and Cadence and pushed them behind her as she started backing up. Senior Davis started slowly stepping backwards with Jacob and Victor. Try to get back to the office. The remaining lunch lady came out of the office and started screaming at the top of her lungs, Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! The sergeant's corpse dropped the lady he was gnawing on and turned towards the crowd of kids. He settled on pursuing the wailing lunch lady. He growled and released a howl, the blood in his throat spurting all over his chest. He charged the lunch lady, jumping over the serving counter and grabbing onto her as they toppled to the ground. Everyone froze paralyzed, until a loud war cry rang out on the other side of the small room. Min stood at the far side of the room and started stomping forward, holding two long blades. No more lunch, ladies, to eat. We need to get out of here. Jacob's look of confusion was mirrored on Olivia's face. Do you have any idea what she's doing? She's Asian, replied Olivia. How the hell would I know what she's doing? Victor walked up quietly to see the sergeant still gorging himself on the plump lunch lady. His stomach turned at the sight of all the blood. Min grabbed Victor's head. Get his attention. Attention? He whispered. Victor coughed and cleared his throat. <clears> At <throat> attention, soldier! He yelled. The sergeant dropped the lunch lady and stood up, facing the two of them. Min swung both blades across her chest in a large X. They slid through the sergeant's neck. She turned her head as the blood splattered across her and Victor. Seconds later, the man's head fell to the ground. The body promptly followed. Holy shit, cried Nate. You killed them. Dion smacked her boyfriend. I'm pretty sure it's still okay to kill a man who just ate two lunch ladies. Nate gave her a stern glance, but turned back to the Asian girl, holding two blades. Where did you get those swords? Mrs. Gray examined Min. Those aren't swords, she replied. They're pizza cutters. Asian improvisation. Olivia just waved her hands towards Min. Well, now that the warrior princess is done, how are we getting out of here? We could stay here, commented Nate. Dion and Olivia both shook their heads. Dion put her hand on Nate's shoulder. We'll never survive cut off from the world. Olivia laughed. Screw staying here, she gestured to the room. In a cafeteria, all there is to eat is bad pizza and weak old milk. There's a Starbucks down the street and there's a grande latte. No foam waiting for me. Mrs. Gray rolled her eyes. I think what Miss All About Me is trying to say is that we need to get out and warn the world about what's going on. If we waited out here, our parents will notice we're missing, said Sean. They all turned to Sean, who was sitting on the floor clutching his knees. Each of them were surprised to see him still in the room, like he just showed up. No one will come looking for us, Olivia piped in. 
She threw her arms in the air. Our parents are all on cruises.